Hi, everybody. This is Darren uh, with OpsRamp. I'm here on the weekly tech talk focused on remote IT operations management. Uh, I'm excited today to have RK, uh, one of our guru solution architects, really as our feature presenter. Um, RK has been um, working with the OpsRamp platform for a number of years, really working closely with our service provider customers, um, working with some of our OEM um, accounts and really diving deep into um, you know, kind of the core capabilities that are, are really driving the success of these MSP and service provider um, OEM customers. So let's dive right in um, to the topic, which is all about managed service providers and some of the functionality that really we feel make OpsRamp unique uh, and something that can accelerate the, the strategic differentiation and growth of, of today's modern managed and cloud service providers. So I just wanna highlight um, actually, you know, in April, right when things were starting to um, turn in, in, the, in the world um, with COVID-19, um, we actually had a survey come out and, you know, maybe it's completely different now, you know, three months later. Um, but, you know, a key point was highlighted around the need for managed service providers to really ramp up now and it highlighted the key benefits of working with MSPs from technical expertise and know-how, enhanced security, cost optimization, you know, freeing up internal resources. And I thought this point was really important to highlight today, and this is what we're gonna focus on. Um, given the burden of supporting a remote workforce while accelerating digital transformation, IT teams will lean more heavily on the expertise of their managed service providers. So um, it's really critical to you know, for service providers to adapt, to, to modernize, to really tackle this you know, new world of, of hybrid IT operations monitoring management. And that's what we're gonna dive into in today's uh, discussion. And most of the time we'll be spending in the demo, um, but I wanted to, to give you a quick overview of how we, how we you know, really approach things at OpsRamp. Now typically, when we work with our customers, the first problem they're trying to solve is visibility. So we come in and look at the, the current environment, you know, where the, the different devices, assets, resources, um, you know, exist in the enterprise. And we focus on hybrid discovery and monitoring. You know, that might be, again, assessing the, the current uh, capabilities of the existing monitoring tools, because every organization has many, maybe too many, and maybe one, at, one or two at each layer of this stack. But that's the first use case for us, is looking at how can we help you get better visibility with automated discovery and, in, and instrumentation now, whether it's through our agents, gateways, or agentless monitoring, um, giving you that um, faster mean time to detection and correction. The second piece is event and incident management. And again, a lot of organizations have disparate tools in this area and just focus on a narrow uh, aspect of, say, alert correlation. We think it's critical to have these, these connected uh, and really streamlined. So bringing event and incident management really into the, you know, a single platform is key. And then being able to remediate and automate really through that machine learning and all the, you know, there's so much uh, discussion right now in the market around AI ops, uh, machine learning, AI for IT operations management. So really that, that unified platform is what we're here to talk about and take you through how OpsRamp can really work with service providers and customers to deliver on that you know, discovery to resolution journey. And whether that's again, kind of faster um, MTTR or being able to get that centralized you know, view Ultimately, you're trying to you know, reduce costs and really accelerate that alignment and um, improve that alignment with the business. So what we often talk about with, with service providers is this vision of, of getting to a digital operations command center, right? Being able to align you know, the IT team with the, with the business units who are, who are often spinning up their own you know, tools and technologies at, at a rapid pace. So I wanna bring you into this discussion, RK, you know, what are you seeing right now in terms of you know, the challenges and, and you know, why it's sometimes difficult to really deliver on this vision of a digital operations command center? Sure. Thank, thanks, Darren. No, I think uh, it's as you as you rightly said, um, you know, in, in any in any environment, <clears throat> having a single pin of view across all the technologies to meet the agile needs of, um, you know, the internal business teams is important. And when it comes to an MSP, the problem is multifold because they have to manage multiple customers and across each customer, there are diverse technologies and solutions out there. So having a single pane, single pane view of all the customers in a multi-tenant fashion and being able to deliver the operations with a comprehensive platform like OpsRamp is really important. And that's what 
you know, we see with most of our MSP customers where, you know, they this, they realize a digital operations command center with OpsRAM. Awesome. Well, let's let's dive into, you know, we've, we've created a list of top 10. This isn't, you know, the exhaustive, com- you know, complete list, but let's, that's a good segue into, you know, the, the, the 10 and then we'll dive right into the demo. Why don't you kind of give us some highlights here and set some context? Sure. No, I think uh, as you as you said, uh, you know, it's a broad platform, um, you know, with comprehensive IT operations capabilities built into a single solution, uh, where you know from ground up, you know, uh, um, you know, we we have designed OpsRAM to be a multi-tenant platform because that's what is very important for MSPs, where having a, a single solution to cater to multiple customers is quite important, uh, particularly you know in in some of the MSP engagements that I work with. You know, having a shared services delivery model is 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 the utmost objective that they wanted to arrive at, so that you know they can they can see greater ROI. Now, having a multi-tenant fashion, uh, having a multi-tenant environment is quite important, but with an ability to quickly onboard customers, that's where um, you know time to value and you know quicker um, means to onboard the customers with you know effective standard uh, optimization practices is quite important from an MSP uh, uh, you know internal objectives. And you know, with OpsRAM, they'll achieve that multi-tenant view of all their customer environments. Uh, they'll have a way to onboard their uh, devices uh, with what we call as device, you know, resource management policies. And oftentimes, uh, with each customer having different solution tech- and technologies, you know, the item solution that an MSP would need have to have uh, need to have a strong uh, you know integration framework. And OpsRAM is already geared towards that, where there are many out of the box integrations, but you know we can quickly, um, you know, configure more more on top of that. And you know this platform is designed in, uh, in such a way that even if some of these MSPs have business requirements that uh, their end customers need to have log into the OpsRAM and have a self service view of the environment. Um, you know the the platform is designed with role based access controls and uh, you know all those benefits. Um, you know that will that will basically accommodate that. Now, beyond this, you know, primary benefits. You know, there are um, there are some additional benefits that some of our MSPs uh, leverage out of the platform. And again, this order might change depending on the MSPs' use case, where you know, few MSPs might might see you know our AOPS capabilities as the key you know requirement for them. So the precedence you know might change, but. Again, if you look at a you know secondary list of uh, benefits or objectives that uh, customer you know MSP customers derive with OpsRAM, you know there is patch management abilities uh, where OpsRAM can automate the OS level patch automation across Windows and Linux workloads. Um, there are very unique features within OpsRAM. Uh, you know we call it as audit recording, where particularly with MSPs they have a challenge uh, whenever they have to manage a customer environment. They have to take remote access into the target devices within the customer environment, and for that, they need to manage you know multiple VPN solutions specific to each customer environment. With OpsRAM, they can eliminate all that overhead, where OpsRAM facilitates remote access. And the benefit or beauty of it is whatever that the MSP operations team have done on the target device through OpsRAM's remote access is actually recorded. And we'll go through that in the demo. And adding on top of it, there are additional benefits like runbook automation. Where OpsRAM is not just discovering and monitoring the environment or consolidating the events, but it also facilitates automation, um, you know, within the platform where it can be used for, um, you know, automated remediation of those events. So, so some of those benefits, including the latest advanced, um, you know, techniques like AI ops and machine learning being bundled into the same platform, so that there could be more, uh, you know, optimization that we could bring as a benefit to the uh, MSP delivery team. So. Looking at all of this, um, you know, it's a comprehensive platform, and I think you know we'll spend a few next few minutes to really go, you know, uh, you know, dive into some of these features. Hey, RK, just before you do that, you know, we have a lot of our current, you know, MSP customers, uh, as well as you know ones that are looking at you know a platform as opposed to building something themselves or stitching a bunch of different tools together uh, on this call. Um, first of all, I want to encourage folks to use the, um, the the chat panels if they have questions for RK as we go through. But I want to get your point of view on on this concept of AI ops. Um, there's, I think, there's some resistance for service providers because of um, the concern about the machines taking over, right? Or, or you know, maybe not having enough transparency or trust uh, in in what might happen if they don't do it, you know, themselves. What's been your experience with with machine learning and and how MSPs are approaching that with OpsRAM? 
Yeah, great question, Darren. I think uh, it's it's pretty uh, you know relevant, and you know we see this common in every enterprise, you know, in every service provider engagement, where you know there are two reasons why you know AI ops or ML cannot be adopted. One is uh, the trust factor. You know, they don't have, they don't you know really believe in the machine learning results, and for that, OpsRAM has a you know real a good design and uh, you know options in place where you know we call this as observed mode or recommend mode where we can turn on machine learning and really evaluate the results and then start to evaluate you know assess their uh, benefits and then you know turn on them that's that's one way where we give a transition mode for people to start adopt machine learning that's one benefit the second um, aspect or challenge that we see with many service providers is they lack the knowledge and know-how um, or ability to uh, you know deploy or configure a machine learning and with OpsRAM they don't really need in-house experts to adopt any of this um, because you know we have, we have designed the features in such a way that you know even without knowledge of machine learning and uh, some of the algorithms behind the scenes they can easily they can easily turn on these features from the user interface and start to leverage the benefits so even from an adopt you know from an adoption as well as a configuration standpoint. OpsRamp have included some of these scenarios, particularly coming as a feedback from our service provider engagements, so that you know leveraging some of these AI ops and machine learning benefits becomes easier, and and they could see the benefits. Awesome. Well, let's let's see it. Let's see it in action. So I'm looking forward to right. seeing observe mode and recommend mode and some of those things as well. Sure. Um, let me switch uh, the screen share. Um, so I'll be going through our uh, demo environment here. And uh, now, obviously, I'm logged in as a service provider, and we could see, um, you know, we, you know, we we showcase the ability to list at all of the customers that I manage as a service provider. When I log in, I'll have the ability to switch between different customer environments, and uh, you know, accordingly, you know, the amount of information that OpsRamp would show is specific to that environment. And in a, you know, and uh, when when it pertains to a given customer, you know. Again, OpsRAM being a broader platform, you know, looking at the earlier slide that Darren had presented, you know, we do discovery monitoring, um, event management, automation. So accordingly, you know, the portal interface that you see here is, uh, is structured to reflect those uh, different set of information. And uh, when it comes to some of these dashboards, um, you know, there are multiple ways we can configure these dashboards to really dive into a specific technology or workload. And this is where, you know, some of these dashboards really become as a means of visibility into a certain workload and help us, um, you know, derive, uh, um, you know, um, visibility as, as a means for uh, digital operations command center. Now, if really step back and, and try to understand how OpsRAM collects all of this information, you know, we do have collectors that get instrumented in the customer environment, um, you know, agentless or agent-based components, and using a combination of all those collectors as well as our API level integrations with you know um, you know with some of the cloud environments, uh, OpsRAM really presents a consolidated view of hybrid workloads in a single view, and you know this we are seeing it for a for a given customer, and if I switch the customer and I get to see the environment that belongs to the other customer. So uh, with OpsRAM, the true multi-tenant nature of looking at all my customers' environment from a service provider view is definitely accommodated. And within a uh, customer environment, I can get granular and construct more logical views, um, you know, define all of this. So, so that's at a high level in terms of how OpsRamp helps to consolidate um, all of the detail, all of the hybrid workload environment across multiple customers into a single solution. Now, on top of this, you know, for each customer, um, you know, the MSPs have a um, you know um, have a desire to onboard this customer environment. Uh, you know, with standard mechanisms, um, you know, they really require, uh, you know, in my uh, engagement with uh, MSPs, you know, I, I derived, uh, uh, you know, I, I could derive two uh, objectives that they always uh, try to, you know, um, manage. One is they want a, every customer environment to be onboarded with the standard practices. And at the same time, they also have to respect, um, you know, the, the customer uh, specific requirements or uh, you know specific configuration settings as well. So how do we achieve that? And you know we also have to consider how quickly can they onboard a, you know a given customer environment so that they can really take take time for whatever transition is required to ma fully fully manage the customer environment. And for that, you know we should spend um, as less time as required in onboarding a customer environment 
and that's where you know we have designed this uh, you know management policies where with few policies defined in opsram as a one time definition you know we can quickly onboard any workload that we come across in a given customer environment and i'm showing an example of a linux it could be for a vmware it could be for a network environment or it could be for a storage environment um opsram has um, policies that we can filter the right workloads and for you know the workloads that meet a certain criteria you know you know we can we can assign the right monitoring track you know policies or it could be some automation jobs that we can assign so you know in terms of onboarding uh, any discovered elements in a customer environment these policies really you know help us um, you know to onboard them with the right uh, you know monitoring policies or automation policies uh, including uh you know it could be the uh, patch automation jobs or it could be assigning you know uh, standard operating procedures or kb articles and we'll go through all of this but with a single policy you know we'll have an ability to onboard multiple set of elements um in, in a given customer environment and uh, make sure that they are you know standardized uh, from an onboarding perspective now that's you know the policy based onboarding is a, is a strong feature that many of our msps like because it gives them an ability to consistently onboard all their customers with the same set of practices but also gives them to onboard um you know a large scale set of elements as well like in you know there are some of our msp customers who actually onboard um you know enterprises um you know with 10000 elements kind of uh, infrastructure footprint uh with this kind of a policy based onboarding they can probably onboard them in couple of weeks um you know really drastically bringing short the you know the onboarding time that requires now on top of this as we deploy these monitoring policies um you know the, there's a lot that um the you know the msp can you know drive with an ops ramp in terms of uh, effective alert management and that is where as we deploy all of this um, um you know monitoring policies across the devices um you know i'll pick one of the server as an example um and uh, you know it could be um you know a network element or i can pick uh, a sql server as a, also as an example so when they dive onto a network device um as an example they they you know the msp will have a quick visibility of all the interfaces on the device uh, they'll also have uh, what this device is connected to they can even understand a uh, topological view of uh, how this element is connected to the other uh, um, um, devices in the in the customer environment and all of this is pretty useful you know in terms of event correlation or it could be for impact analysis um uh, where opsram is really bringing together of uh, this data and when i dive onto one of the device all the monitoring information that opsram is pulling is shown in the form of telemetry charts where you know msp is probably wanted to maintain this data for over a year um so opsram you know already carries that features uh, where all the telemetry data that we collect is is available across uh, uh, you know across historical time frames as well and and the same applies for other kinds of uh, um you know uh, server footprint where i'll quickly pick uh, once you know a device uh, where you know if this is in installed with uh, uh, you know database application opsram instantly recognizes some of the database applications you know present some of the analytics around it um we can go on to monitoring custom um you know kpis around this uh, workloads as well uh, including the you know patch uh, uh, information where opsram uh, pulls the missing patches across this operating system it understands what are the missing patches and there could be a complete workflow in terms of approving these patches and uh, um, and making sure that the os level uh, patch installation is automated as well and there's a complete workflow in terms of how opsram drives that you know patch management uh, we'll get to that in a minute but what we see is across all the workloads that opsram is managing in a given customer environment we have the ability to quickly onboard them and as we onboard those elements with the right monitoring policies there is deep dive information that the msp operations team can dive into in terms of Uh, understanding the performance trend or topological association of how these elements are connected now all of this is quite important when it comes to troubleshoot and uh, you know issue resolution and that's where you know we have a single event management layer with an opsram where you know opsram presents the events across all customers uh, we could see the customer environment from where these events are coming from we could see what device it is impacting what metric is triggering that alert um, and you know by default 
uh, opstamp also carries deduplication kind of correlation where any repetitive event is probably um, you know correlated uh, by default and there are there are more means to define these correlation policies um, where the, you know we can define uh, alert correlation policies based on um, uh, you know, based on ML and uh, AOPS, uh, and this is where uh, you know there could be multiple alert correlation policies that we can define. Uh, again, these policies are customer specific, so that um, you know if you wanted to do something across all customers, there are there are ways to do that. Or if you wanted to define these correlation policies specific to a customer environment, you know, OpsRAM provides their tenant level policies as well. And um, you know, as we pick one of this policy. Um, let's say, um, you know, we combine um, the ability to narrow down to the right elements, right uh, infrastructure elements based on, uh, you know, a defined criteria, or we can turn on machine learning uh, sequence analysis. And, and this could be uh, based on a quick uh, seed file, input file that we can supply to the system so that the machine is learning from that uh, input sequence. Or we could just turn on continuous learning, wherein OpsRAM's ML uh, OpsQ engine is going to analyze the incoming alert feed, and then uh, understand the you know the the relationship between these uh, different alerts, and hence produces inferences over a period of time. And uh, you know, in doing all of this, if we want uh, the topology association that OpsRAM is picking as part of its discovery to be considered into that analysis, you know, we can turn on those flags. So as we see, you know, we have made it simpler for the MSP operations team to leverage different criteria. It could be their own seed data that they want to supply, or they can turn on, you know, ML analysis by OpsRamp engine, or, you know, as a complementary, they can also leverage our discovery or topology association so that we are getting granular in terms of how these alerts are getting correlated. And when we really dive into some of the alert um, correlation results, um, we could see how we can create different views. Um, so let me, um, you know, pick one of the view as an example, and we could see in this case um, something that went down. Uh, OpsRamp, uh, you know, clearly, uh, you know, correlates all the different alerts. You know, even though multiple services have uh, triggered down, uh, you know, with the with the sequence that we have derived, we understand that there's a common, um, you know, root cause happening across the server, and all these alerts get correlated. So. Now, this is, you know, these are some of the outcomes of alert correlation where, you know, we present lesser uh, number of alerts and uh, across those uh, correlated alerts, the operations team, the MSP operations team can then decide to create an incident. And again, in doing so, some of these MSP uh, operations uh, team, they have, uh, you know, different maturity models in terms of how uh, they would process these uh, events, you know, few oper you know, MSPs. Uh, they have a 24 by 7 manned operation center that they you know run across in watching these events and uh, you know they follow uh, you know deep analysis in terms of triaging these events and then uh, deciding whether to create an incident or to escalate uh, this incident to uh, you know various technology stakeholders now if if that is a traditional process that they're following you know opsram has mechanisms where you know they can troubleshoot more on the device Without again having to log into the device, you know they can execute some of these commands, um, or they can even um, launch remote access. And I'll show how um, they can launch remote access from the platform. Uh, but you know this gives comprehensive capabilities for operations team when they're going through manual triage process. They can create an incident against this, and this incident will then be, um, you know, integrated with uh, an ITSM of choice. Uh, the MSPs might have. Service now in their environment, or there could be you know shareable remedy, you know C, uh, BMC remedy or CA service desk, whatever might be the integration. Um, you know we can enable so that any events that are you know that are being created as incidents with an ops ram are flowing in real time into those ITSM systems um, by means of our integration hub. Now on top of this, um, there could be few scenarios where the MSPs might have a DevOps kind of model. Or may want to escalate these events to the end customers. If so, again, you know we have um, built-in features with an ops ramp where we can route these alerts into, um, you know, into the required, uh, you know, stakeholders. Um, you know, again, we can decide, uh, you know, the kind of resources that we wanted to pick. Um, resources in this case is the the managed elements. 
um, it could be um, you know on, on top of those managed elements the kind of alerts that we wanted to uh, narrow down and then decide that opsram should send an um, you know escalation alert escalation email or uh, you know we also support uh, other kinds of channels in terms of uh, sending these alerts in the form of uh, text message or phone call where opsram can automate the entire process of sending an alert notification to the required stakeholders um, or decide to create an incident um, out of that uh, alert notification as well so so it could be a manual triage process or an automated process the MSPs can decide which model they wanted to uh, configure and leverage out of OpsRAM so that they are optimizing some of the time they spend on some of you know these routine activities, and uh, you know we have both the options available within the platform that um, that we can implement uh, uh, given the scenario. Now, as we do this, um, you know there are uh, alerts that you know we are receiving. We're aggregating and correlating them. We're then translating them as notifications or incidents. Uh, and this is where um, OpsRAM gives additional benefits in terms of leveraging automation as a means to really um, troubleshoot or remediate some of these events. And when it comes to some of these uh, runbook automation, uh, you know, we have different ways to support runbook automation. Um, you know, we can, um, let's say, you know, I'll pick one of this uh, uh, script here um, and OpsRAM currently allows uh, to leverage multiple scripting languages as a means to define the script. We can import the required uh, remediation script within OpsRAM platform and then um, execute this on, uh, you know, if, if it requires some parameters, we can supply all those input uh, you know, conditions and then attach this against uh, a set of devices or an alert where uh, OpsRAM will show, um, you know, the output of, uh, let's say if I'm looking at this, um, and OpsRamp is executing, uh, you know, the runbook automation. It collects the details across each and every device as as included in the automation script. So it could be to gather some additional details of uh, related to the alert, or it could be to remediate um, some of these alerts. Now, uh, when it comes to some of these automation scripts, we have extended, uh, you know, the automation framework uh, where. You know, uh, we could build a complete workflow um, in terms of, uh, you know, multiple steps that we wanted to execute. Let's say, you know, we wanted to, um, you know, initially verify um, on receiving an alert. You know, we really wanted to verify why the system went down. We wanted to run a sequence of checks. And for that, you know, we'll, we'll execute a script against that workload. And in doing so, we can use our agent residing on the device as a means, or we can also go through um, you know, an agentless option, um, you know, it could be Ansible automation script or it could be leveraging our OpsRAM gateway as a means to execute these scripts. So, you know, depending on the customer environment and the instrumentation we have, we can execute these scripts on the customer uh, target devices to, re to really evaluate what, you know, what caused, um, you know, the uh, system to go down or the services to go down. Uh, it could be for you know uh, diagnostic details, or it could be for automation. And depending on those results of the script, and if you wanted to trigger further uh, sequence of things, um, it could be to update the in existing incident with additional uh, you know uh, debug information that we captured, or to notify the um, individual. So we can we can really uh, construct a, a deep patch automation. Uh, sorry, a, a deep runbook automation workflow to really go through and automatically attend to those alerts so that we are really um, leveraging uh, some of these mechanisms to optimize um, you know, how our operations team are spending towards those routine activities. So uh, these are some of the elements um, in terms of automation enhancements within the platform. And at the same time, if you switch back uh, with respect to uh, the patch automation capabilities, um, as, I, as I briefly touched earlier, um, OpsRamp, helps towards patch automation as well where across the environment um, you know it could be windows or linux uh, environment that i have in a given customer location opsram picks what are the missing patches and we could see how it highlights that you know there are missing patches across uh, a given device um, uh, and this is by patch uh, view that i'm looking at there could be a by device view uh, that i can look at where you know picking a windows server I can understand that you know there are two missing patches, and uh, it highlights uh, you know what is the severity of those patches, whether installing those patches requires a restart, 
If so, I can accordingly approve some of these patches. And uh, you know, there's a complete workflow in terms of going through those patch installation where OpsRamp would uh, provide means to approve the patches, create a baseline, uh, like a whitelist and blacklist kind of configuration. And then you know it presents results um, as uh, or you know OpsRamp agent uh, installs these missing patches. If we see any failures and uh, you know uh, successful uh, installation, you know we list those results per KBID so that we understand how many of these uh, patches have been successfully installed, what are the devices and things like that. So uh, when it comes to patch automation, which is a bulk of activity that MSP teams um, take up in managing the customer environment. OpsRamp you know, bundles that as an automated feature um, where we can turn on this both for Windows on uh, Linux patch installation across the environment. So, hey, so okay, it's just, yeah, uh, yeah. want you to be able to take a breath for a second. Um, <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot to cover, so I'm just rushing through. So, I mean, there's, you're clearly going through a whole life cycle, um, and that's you know, I know that's part of the initial vision of, of having that whole life cycle from discovery on through to remediation. I want to just before you keep going to the next part of your demo, um, are you finding or do you find that some MSPs stop at a certain point and they only do the first part of what you've gone through? Um, or, you know, I'd love to get your your advice for folks who, who maybe only are at, at phase one of their journey with OpsRamp and what are some things they should be really digging more into to evolve? Uh, no, very good question. In fact, uh, the platform is designed to carry those uh, modularized implementation or use case implementation where you know although the platform carries um, you know all of these features bundled into the same solution you know we do see customers um, where they enable this only for you know hybrid discovery and uh, you know monitoring you know like you know the visibility aspect where you know they'll they'll leverage opstram for discovery and monitoring use case alone and probably you know they may have existing event management uh, solution probably either homegrown or third party solution that they already invested and you know we could feed all our events into such an event management solution. So that's one way where they can start the consumption with discovery and monitoring, or you know they may or could be the other scenario where they have a bunch of uh, existing monitoring solutions that they've already invested, and they could not really um, you know swap that with OpsRAM capabilities. But what we provide with an OpsRAM is a strong integration framework where we can integrate with other monitoring solutions as well. So that OpsRAM can then become an event management layer, taking key event, you know feed from all these different monitoring solutions, um, so that you know we we can offer our alert management and correlation capabilities and you know everything around uh, um, you know OpsQ uh, capabilities. Um, that could be another use case. All that makes a lot of sense. And you know generally, I mean, I, I like that. So first would be say getting going with discovery and monitoring just to see what's going on across the environments. Second is let's you know we we kind of sometimes say integrate to consolidate. Let's start right. bringing in feeds from different monitoring tools, but then also work with with the customers, the MSPs on a on a path towards you know reducing because I don't think too many clients want to have more monitoring tools. It's how do we get rid of some of the legacy stuff as we modernize? Exactly. Yeah, that's true. And, and then these are, uh, you know, these are like value add features, like all the automation and uh, you know the runbook automation or the patch automation, where, you know, typically we see MSPs have uh, large teams to go through these set of activities. With you know, with OpsRAM, they'll have an ability to you know optimize um, you know their their operations team bandwidth across um, these activities. So this could be another use case where you know they can leverage OpsRAM for some of these automation requirements, and. Uh, you know, to to go further, you know, we see this uh, that you know the operation, the MSP teams have to spend a lot of time in reporting back the information as well. Uh, where at the end of the month, you know, they have these uh, you know reviews with the end customer. They have to present the alert analysis, the ticket analysis. Um, you know, they they probably have to uh, uh, present uh, you know the patch compliance report, the antivirus health state on the servers, or uh, there could be one single report. Uh, that OpsRAM bundles here. We call this as the executive summary report, which most of our MSP customers uh, like within the platform, where it bundles, you know, as a mouse over, you know, it shows that this is a single report that probably combines, you know, the device inventory that we are managing for a customer, the availability of those devices, um, the top consumption um, devices by CPU, by memory, by disk utilization, or by another KPI that we wanted to measure, uh, the patch compliance, the antivirus health state. 
the alert and tickets that we have uh, managed for a given customer within a within a given time frame it could be a monthly or a weekly review that we are going through now what opsram offers in this uh, reporting framework is an ability to select any report schedule this uh, um, on a recurring basis so that opsram would automatically generate these reports on a monthly or a weekly basis and just gives a email digest that we can download and and then you know manipulate and present back to the customer so it even makes it easier from a reporting perspective uh, and and we have dashboards anyway you know, if you really wanted to provide uh, live visibility for uh, you know for the end customers, we can always leverage our role-based access, extend um, you know OpsRamp access to the end customers so that they log in and have a self-service view across all of this. Uh, so both from a reporting and visibility perspective, you know we have uh, baked-in features in the platform that can really uh, be leveraged to that benefit. Now, um, you know, as I, as I spoke earlier. Some of the uh, MSPs, you know, they have a challenge in accessing the customer environment, and that's where with an ops ramp, you know, we have this unique feature to take remote access, uh, particularly, you know, when, when they wanted to, um, let's say, you know, I'm on a certain device here, and, uh, you know, I can pick a device and launch remote access. Um, let me quick this uh, quickly select this device. And uh, this is a Linux server, and I probably wanted to take remote access. I can launch, uh, you know, the remote access. It'll ask me whether I should leverage the existing credentials. Um, you know, I can store all my credentials to the end target devices with an ops ramp, or I can supply them at runtime. And uh, in in which case, ops ramp would uh, would basically, you know, launch the remote access, and uh, you know, everything that I do on the end device will actually be recorded, and I can even play back uh, the entire recording um, in terms of understanding what rk as a user logged in onto the device and what did you do on the end device so uh, so that's also automated in terms of uh, the complete audit or transparency into what the operations team is doing on the end target device of the customer now this is again useful either for your internal training within the msp operations team or it could be also uh, uh, you know useful as a means to provide that additional transparency to the end customer so so we could see from a regular um, operations perspective where if we have to log into the end device opsram has mechanisms either to execute you know remote commands without having to log in or we can launch remote access like an rdp or ssh and opsram records entire uh, set of things that the admin has done on the end device so so that's at a high level. Um, I know this is a lot to cover in a short time. So we made sure to really give a quick glance across some of these features. I hope you know this is useful. So I'll pause here if there are any questions from the team, um, Darry. Yeah, that's a good, good overview. And I wanted to highlight, I mean, I, I like that you kind of wrapped with this um, remote access capabilities. Let's stay in the demo for a second. Um, the the we I just want to also do a plug. We did a whole session tech talk on remote access, so folks can go to um, opsramp.com/events and and check out that recording. Um, there's a question about cloud integrations. Um, are you seeing any trends there? You know, AWS more than GCP, more than uh, Azure. I mean, what can you kind of share with us around how how we look at um, kind of the multi-cloud world? Um, yeah, good question. No, I think uh, we have few, uh, you know, MSPs. Um, you know, in fact, they, they they are called as CSPs, cloud service providers, where you know the entire business is really specialized in managing cloud workloads of the end customers. And uh, to that, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, we have a few uh, large CSPs on the platform. Um, you know that that uh, that leverage OpsRAM in managing multiple cloud environments. Um, that includes uh, AWS, Azure, and Google, where OpsRamp integrates with these cloud environments in in gathering the inventory across these um, you know cloud uh, uh, public cloud workloads. Um, we could also monitor these cloud workloads using our API level integration. Particularly, you know, it's not just about installing an agent or gateway OpsRamp gateway within the you know customer environment and managing it, but when you know a lot of public cloud components are PaaS services. And that's where OpsRAM can integrate with all of the PaaS services as well and monitor them using our API level integration. Uh, we can also derive uh, cost insight in terms of what the customer spend is towards a certain cloud environment, break it down into various analytics so that you know we are giving cost insight in terms of what their spend um, towards public cloud environments. Is. So, so these are some of the capabilities. So from a hybrid cloud workload perspective, 
I think we have decent customers that you know leverage OpsRAM for pure traditional data center workload management. And we also, on the other end, we also have CSPs um, that are that are really specialized in public cloud, um, you know, workloads and leverage OpsRAM for that. Or we have a spectrum of customers that have both hybrid workloads in nature. So uh, OpsRAM really stretches uh, pretty decently across these, uh, you know, different uh, diverse workloads. That makes sense. I mean, you, you mentioned the um, you know the th the two use cases to get started. One might be hybrid discovery and monitoring. Might one might be event management with ingestion of, of third party monitoring tool alerts. This might be a third. Is starting with more of a cloud centric uh, perspective, get some visibility there, and then expand into the on prem footprint. Um, anything you can oh, anything you can share with us um, on Kubernetes and how we th we're thinking about Kubernetes today and, and going forward. Yeah, sure. Um, in fact, uh, we do have uh, built-in integrations with Kubernetes. I mean, it could be any container uh, technology, Kubernetes, Docker, Apache MesOS, or uh, you know some of the recent changes with Redshift. So, I mean, all of these deployments, OpsRAM again uh, has an ability to discover the container um, uh, footprint uh, and start to monitor them. Um, and uh, you know, this could be across. Uh, Again, the container uh, footprint could be on-prem, or it could be on some of the, um, like in this case, what I'm showing here is a you know GKE service on the Google Cloud. So it could be any of this. Of, you know, we are agnostic of the container deployment. We could discover and start to monitor this, um, you know, container elements and tie them back into uh, you know a microservice architecture where if some of these containers are responsible for a certain microservice. You know, we can even lay out um, how these containers together are responsible for a certain microservice. So again, OpsRAM is bringing that service impact analysis as well. Uh, and this kind of a service map that I'm showing here could be on container um, elements um, that are contributing towards this, or it could be the standard, uh, you know, VMs or physical servers. Uh, but OpsRAM would bring all of this um, discovery and information um, that, you know, that we are gathering and bring it into a service map context so that we can present uh, business service view analysis as well. Uh, when we really identify that a certain element or alert is impacted, we clearly know that a certain business service or application within the customer environment is impacted out of it. So that's an outcome. But uh, to start with, it, you know, we are agnostic of any container technology, but bring it to a level where we are bubbling it up in terms of how a business service is tied out of those individual elements. Fantastic. I think that's a really important point is not just being able to monitor the technology, but being tied tie together, see the interdependencies, the relationships tied to a service or topology map. Um, great. So let's, I think we, we promised 45 minutes. So let's uh, just go back to slides with a couple of final thoughts here. Um, thanks for taking us through all of that, um, RK. So let me just uh, pop up the, the slides and um, wanted just to, to kind of wrap up with a few things. So we covered um, a lot today. Uh, in in sort of this whole journey from discovery through you know getting that hybrid visibility to ultimately try to get you know reduce total cost of ownership um, whether that's through reduction of tools or um, just more greater productivity um, with what you have as you modernize and transform and ultimately to improve performance right and you know how, how to eliminate some of those um, degradations and potential outages and then get smarter through machine learning. Um, RK spent quite a bit of time kind of walking through the multi-tenant uh, nature of the OpsRAM platform, which is really um, well suited for managed service providers, but also for enterprise IT organizations who want to run like a service provider, right? Being able to deliver that autonomy out to your lines of business and departments, but also have that centralized view um, and visibility. So that's the, the sort of discovery to resolution journey. Um, I wanted to just to highlight a couple of uh, um, uh, resources for folks. Uh, we have a few new blog posts on the OpsRamp uh, website. Um, one recently covered um, really what is the new mandate for managed service providers and talks about this sort of transition to become more of a cloud service provider. Um, so that's a, a new blog post I just wanted to highlight um, and then just wrap up with, you know, making sure folks know about additional tech talks. You can just go to opsramp.com slash, um, slash events to get the whole list. Um, RK, I want to give you kind of the final word. If, if I'm a service provider who's just looking at, uh, at, at OpsRamp or I'm one who's been using us for some time, but maybe not taking advantage of, of some of the newer capabilities, what's your, um, what's your advice? What's your uh, guidance? 
Um, I mean, um, I think, uh, you know, some of these tech talks are, uh, you know, we have these webinars. Uh, that's one way for MSPs to get familiar. We also have uh, different sales motion in terms of, uh, um, you know, a sandbox access and things of that nature where, you know, they can explore about OpsRamp. But uh, and again, you know, what we see with many of MSPs is as they wanted to realize uh, digital transformation um, initiatives across their customer environments, uh, they could really engage with OpsRAM across a given customer use case. And that could be a, a land scenario in a given customer environment. And slowly, they can really adopt it across all their customers so that uh, it, they really consolidate into this digital operations command center framework and leverage the benefits. So it could be any of those scenarios. Um, you know, uh, we could uh, we could start uh, uh, engaging with uh, you know these service product engagements. Fantastic. So visit offstream.com, you know, request a demo if you're if you're new to us. Um, we'd love to kind of go deeper here. And hopefully this has been a useful session. Uh, share your feedback. And um, thanks, RK, for a, a fantastic demonstration. Thank you.